Fine day, Marshal. Lose your horse? Lost both horses, by Joe. Eight and a quarter miles back. Three dirty neck road agents with bandanas over their foul mouths. What about your guns? I never wear sidearms. Except in the hands of an authorized peace officer, the Western Six Shooter is an assassin's implement. And personally, I have no ambition to be provoked into letting some professional gunslinger murder me, or possibly commit homicide myself. Well, I wish every young man in this territory had your good sense. I'm uh, Deputy Marshal Sam Buckhart. Delighted, sir, delighted. My own name? <laughs> well, I guess around these parts, I'm generally known as um, the Dude, or occasionally Four Eyes. Permit a traveler to go under the titles he's earned. Uh, tell me, uh, how did you know what happened exactly eight and a quarter miles back? I know the length of my stride. Usually keep count. I gather from their filthy conversation there's a community somewhere up ahead called uh, Housefly. That's another nine miles, and that's Horsefly. Chewfly, Dragonfly. Well, we'll ride and walk. That's all right, Marshal. I need the exercise. Builds the physical constitution. Foot supports the hand, the hand serves the mind, the mind is the man himself. Well, anyway, water up first. Now I'll make it on my own, Marshal. Little contest with myself. Oh, that's dangerous. Reasonably. Um, it, uh, it might be prudent if you'd, uh, put those eyeglasses in your pocket when you go into horsefly. Prudent? <laughs> Until I got these, I had no conception how beautiful the world was. Good day to you, sir. alkali and it'd give you the fan tart. Looking for somebody, Marshal? I'm living a prisoner at Roswell. That's for water, but... That drunk out there keeps thinking the tarantulas have got it in for him. A little stud session. Mm, nice quiet town. Well, we get it lively Sunday night. Somebody call a man. Stranger in here, injured himself, holding five deuces. My, oh, my. We got the law with us. I was wondering, where's your local constable? Boys ain't got around to naming one yet. I do what I can to keep order. Name's Strelin, trigger to my friends. Ha! Put that there on my tail. That was by my own. In case I should ever read the man's name on a warrant. Shrink, you should have seen it. If you had this here warrant of yours with my name on it, just what would you do, Marshal? I'll take you dead or alive. Be a pleasure, just any time. Mutual, any time. <laughs> mm. 
Most stylish accommodations in the hotel. Take surprise, you can climb out on the balcony here and jump off. How about a double room? Oh. Bedding clean? Clean? Smell it. Just been disinfectorated with coal oil. I smell it. <clears throat> uh, fetch a holler for Danforth if you want anything, Marshal. After I uh, drink this up, that is. Hey! You might try taking your boots off before you go to bed. Guest is liable for any fresh spur holes in the mattress. Again, Hungerford? Looks like I'm gonna have to show you boys how this works. Boys, you listen here to me. In horsefly, a dude always does exactly like he's told to you, Savvy. Little fun for the boys, Savvy. All right now, start cakewalking. <laughs> I guess my duties cover that. But now I'm here on government business. <laughs> We've been trying your boy for size. A new pair of boots. <laughs> you can see he ain't hurting none. That's lucky for both of you. Well, boys, if you're finished with your fun, this round is on me. Yeah! <laughs> this cuss ain't got no money. Haven't I heard your voice somewhere? Twenty dollar gold piece. What do you have, mister? Water. Nine hours ago, three brave, bold, bad men left me in the desert without my horses or canteens. Need I add they had their faces covered? I ask for water. Oh, well, there's too much alkali in this stuff. You can't drink it straight. Mm. I serve it with a vinegar chaser. Elementary chemistry. Hit me again, sir. What is with this glue? A gentleman, have a good look. Bandits, attention, please. For I assume the three of you will be drinking my beer here, among the others. Now, I don't so much mind the loss of my camping equipment. I can replace that. You must have needed it rather badly to put on masks and uh, rob a friendly visitor. But in addition, a gold ring was taken. Now, it has no great value in money, but it's been in my family for over 200 years. My dead father gave it to me, and I had hoped that someday I might give it to a son of mine. I won't insult you by offering a reward. That's a mighty big mouth there. And I have a constitutional right with that big mouth to shoot it off any time I want, secured to me and my posterity under the Bill of Rights. You know what that is? By the way, when do you hold your town elections? Uh, 
in Horsefly, we don't have no elections. Why not? It ain't needful. Who says so, Mr. Whoever you are? I do. Name Strellan. Trigger to you. Hmm. I must have my geography wrong. I thought I was in the United States. What are you, a lot of pedigreed Malino sheep? Oh, eyes. You're nothing but a troublemaker. And you, sir, are a receiver of stolen goods. That's my ring, engraved with a helmet and three plumes. Now, ain't that a coincidence? <laughs> this here little old Purdy's been in my family for over 2,000 years. <laughs> <laughs> this man is a thief and a liar. It's not Armstrong. It's all right, Marshal. Don't interfere. This shabby malefactor scratched himself on a cactus, he'd bleed yellow. Without those circus shooters, any man in the territory could spread him on toast like butter. Trade, he don't know no better. I'm gonna remember you saying that there, Hungerford. Oh, I know what you up to, Marshal. I take him and you gun me down. Good as a federal war. You forgetting I got friends. Nobody has friends when he's dead. Come on. This gun greaser owns a building. Where's my ring? Are you coming or do I have the pistol with you? <laughs> By Jiku, he means it. <laughs> mm. In Delmonico's restaurant, this steak would cost you a dollar and thirty-five cents. You from New York? Six generations. This summer I've been up in the Badlands. Thought I'd swing down here, broaden my education. Mm, bully country. I mean the whole howling shebang from Maine right on west. And shooting grizzlies up north? Hunting grizzlies. Tracked into the mountains for ten days. Suddenly both guides whisper, there's your bear. <laughs> Little female black bear. Cub last year. Boys, I said, I'll pat her, but be blowed if I'll shoot. <laughs> Got back to the eastern papers. I understand now there's a fad of little toy bear cubs for the kids. You were in the papers? Well, Sam, you see, I, uh... Duke, you passed a couple of remarks, been a-sticking in my crawl. Your boy's been pushing you on it. They got a right. He's got you covered under the table tree. I seen him draw and we started to cross. Strelling, he still isn't armed. now. Pick it up. Pick it up! No, sir. <laughs> Who's the bleeding yellow now? Because as long as you're here, I'm gonna look you up every single morning sharp at nine o'clock. And if each time you don't fight me, I'm gonna do that same thing again. Tomorrow morning, sharp at 8.30, you're heading back for the Badlands under my personal escort. You'll get your grizzly yet. I want my ring more than I want a grizzly. At your age, what you want most is a lot of future. What's the future except to live each passing hour for the record? By Jove, I'll have another one of these steaks. Oh? Coming up. One 40-inch bed? Why didn't you get two singles? That's all I had. Huh. What? My pack outfit. Maybe I don't need as much looking after as you think. Cheers for a clean nightshirt. You must have come over the balcony. Uh, what's this? Your horses is at hitch rail. Sorry, I couldn't get the ring. Huh. Well, most men are honest. If you call on them, 
When I call on him. You graduated the spring before my freshman year. Oh, think of bumping into another Harvard man like this. Delighted, sir, delighted. Yes, I uh, saw your Phi Beta Kappa key. Oh, mere academic honor. But you're a legend back there. That night raid of yours on President Elliott's office during alumni week? Oh, magnificent. Oh, the, the Glee Club has a ballad about it. Well, we'll talk about it tomorrow on the trail. Oh, I'm sorry, old man. I, I didn't mean to awaken you. I had to pay my respects, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Horrifying thought. Suppose one of us had been a Yale man, huh? <laughs> now, look, we have to get up at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Forty-five. We overslept. What's that? You don't recognize the gym uniform of the Harvard Athletic Association? You go outdoors like that, and you'll be lynched. You come back here. You're under arrest. Buckhart, you've got all the makings of an old mother hen. You're going to be a dead rooster. Confounded schoolboy watered the knots. Danford! Danford! I'm a coming! I'm a coming! I'm a coming! What is it, Marshal? Give me your pants. Uh, uh, what did you say? Your pants! Pronto! Take them off! Well, I, I ain't gonna do no such thing. Danford! I'm officially requisitioning those pants in the name of the United States government. Non-cooperation is a felony! Stand up bare knuckled, and I'll take it off you. <laughs> you, 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 you against me? <laughs> hey, boy, this here gonna be a real treat. <laughs> no, no, kid, he's a gouge fighter. Take your chances with a gun. Welcome, Marshal. You're just in time. You could be a referee. <laughs> I appreciate being appropriately dressed. Thanks to you. You maniac. He's got eight inches on you and a hundred pounds. He'll stomp your chest and gouge your face and come out of it with your eyeball in his fist. Place your bets as you please, Marshal, but kindly step back. You have no authority to interfere in an amateur sports event. <laughs> <laughs> You're ready now, four eyes. In all fairness, I am obliged to tell you that I box rather well. Rosie! <laughs> to bear witness to that.
Where did you learn to fight like that? A Japanese friend of mine. Extraordinary character. Had his uh, pants tattooed right on him. Oh. Boys, why, Frenchy, call. Sterling, I think this town will be holding an election soon. You better be riding. You'd better take his advice and get out of town. And if not, are you, boy, I wouldn't be coming back. Pay you a visit when I go east. Bully, you do that. I'll not forget the man that taught me no one can hope to perform a public service without the help of backers. Dude, adios. Friend, my real name is Theodore Roosevelt. Call me Teddy. Teddy it is. When election day comes, count on me. I'll be counting on all these rough riders out here. School. Oh, fine. Sam, who's Mr. Theodore Roosevelt? Well, he's... Where did you hear about him? There's a letter just to him in your handwriting in the hall. Oh. Who is he? Well, he's kind of hard to describe, Tess. Try. All right. He's a young man I met last week in the town of Horsefly. How young? Oh, 24, maybe 25. Oh, that's old. But I don't mind you telling me more about him. Well, Tess, he has a fine, sensitive face, a wonderful smile. He's a man who isn't afraid to risk his life to defend what he believes in. He sounds just like you. has been a four-star production.